All right, my name is Kelly. Uh, I am in zone B, 7B, in Maryland. It is currently about 57 degrees outside, very cloudy. This is my dog down here. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna try and start my videos off by saying that first and foremost, because I know that's really important with beekeeping, weather, temperature, all that. This is the second time I've actually tried to video this intro. Um, the first time around, it was sunnier, but it was really, really breezy and it just didn't work out. So I'm going to try this again. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I want to say that I'm doing this for documentary reasons, but primarily I'm doing it for my dad because my dad would absolutely be doing this beekeeping journey with me if he was if it wasn't for his disabilities so hi dad i love you and this is for you and i'm super excited about this right okay um but for the people who are following me on this page or find this video then um if i talk to the camera like i'm talking to my dad that's why it's it's basically for him so follow along but hopefully it's not too awkward if i call you dad every once in a while <laughs> so the beginning of this journey for me was um i don't really have a beginning i don't know how i got into this and i'm gonna be totally honest with you i think i was on youtube and i found a beekeeping video and i thought it was pretty fascinating and i i thought bees were pretty cool i thought they were fascinating insects and um i came across a channel called just alex I'll link it in my video description and he definitely inspired me. He, it was his journey as a new beekeeper and I saw it and I was like, bro, if he can do this, I could do this, right? I could do this. So I decided I'll give it a try. <laughs> what could be the worst that could happen, right? Honestly, it's been amazing. The journey has been, I don't even have bees yet and I think it's been really awesome. Um, I'm excited to be a part of the beekeeping community in the Howard County area, even though I don't have my bees yet, simply for the fact for the people are amazing here. Um, I don't know what it's like in other states and other counties, but I know in Howard County, it's really awesome. And the people here are fantastic. If you've ever been a part of a beekeeping community or met other beekeepers, you will know that they absolutely love talking about bees and they are excited to talk about bees and they are passionate and it's awesome. <laughs> so um, I learned that uh, because well, let me start by saying that when I decided I wanted to go ahead and do the beekeeping journey, I found Howard County community, uh, the beekeeping community, and I realized that I was a little bit late to sign up for the, um, the BBC classes, the uh, beekeepers beginning courses and um, it was March by the time I decided I was going to do it and the classes had just ended they do it once a year it starts um, I want to say the end of January maybe February maybe beginning of February and ends in March so I was too late but it was a thing that I wanted to do I was going to continue to do more research on it on my own buy books watch YouTube videos uh, you know all that fun stuff I'm going to insert this video in here. I wanted to say that I, I did sign up for the class for 2024 after I missed it in 2023. And I finally finished it and it was awesome. <laughs> so thankfully, my family really supported this journey with me. Um, like I said, especially my dad, but the other people in my family, my other family members were like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so they decided all their funds that they made from their yard sale they gave to me as well, which was really helpful because lumber is hella expensive and um, <laughs> most of the funds went towards lumber to building the hives. So, but through the uh, yard sale, um, like I said, bee beekeepers love to talk about bees and I had put up signs saying, you know, buy my stuff. All the funds are going to go towards beekeeping. And sure enough, beekeepers stopped by my yard sale. People were so amazing. Not only did the people who came to the yard sale buy the items without haggling, they were happy to give me a little bit extra to put in my jar for the beekeeping journey, which was great. And the beekeepers who stopped by um, stopped by and just chatted with me. And it was awesome. It was so cool. And 
through that, I was told about the con ed groups, the continuing educational courses that are weekly meetups in Howard County. And um, they're normally something you do after you do the BBC classes, but I'd miss that. And I was invited to come to the con ed classes and I decide why not? So they are weekly meetups. I started going through there and everyone was super welcoming. And I asked all of my um, newbie questions and nobody judged me. They were all happy to just answer all the questions. I'm sure seemed so basic to them, but no, like, I have never found anybody in this area who made me feel stupid for asking questions. It's just been a wonderful experience. So, so we have a, a master beekeeper who heads up that continuing educational class and um, it's been a great resource for information, um, but mostly the people. I'll say mostly the people have just been fantastic to go with horizontal beekeeping um, because through my research, of vertical beekeeping, I realized that a box, a hive box filled with honey and nectar can easily be 50, 60, 70 plus pounds. And my back after having two children is not the greatest. So I was, that was the one thing that put a little bump in my beekeeping journey where I was like, can I do this? And I found long Langstroth hives. So I decided to go in that direction and I've just been full force in that direction. I am not, though all the classes that I go to when we do the con ed meetings, weekly meetings, it's really great because we do about two hours worth of discussing beekeeping and that includes treatments, mites, pests, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, splits, uh, different seasonal things. Every season we go through what the bees are doing, like when to take off your queen excluder, like all the things. And then afterwards, if it's a nice day outside, we'll go into that person's apiary that we're hosting the class at and get really some hands-on learning. So just having that has been great for educational purposes. I, I've learned a lot, but I've besides learning vertical beekeeping, I have taken all that information and sort of applied it to horizontal beekeeping. I've realized that it's a little bit controversial in this area. I have found that there are like hardly any horizontal beekeepers in Howard County. I only know of one. I made that connection and she's been a great resource as well. She's allowed me to come to her apiary and um, visit her horizontal beekeeping, ask all the questions, because although you can apply all of your learning for vertical beekeeping into horizontal beekeeping, there are some questions like, how do you treat in a horizontal box? Um, So those were questions that I had, and she's been great with answering all of those questions. Um, So that was really helpful. I can't lift all that stuff. So Horizontal beekeeping was kind of the way to go unless I wanted to have my husband involved every time I went out to the apiary if I needed to move boxes around, inspect the hive, or harvest honey. So I didn't think that was a great idea. This is something that I want to do mostly on my own. They, My husband and my brother have helped me extremely so much in the building of the boxes and getting the apiary set up. But once that is done, I just want to be able to do it as much as I can on my own. Um, So that's the reason why I went with that direction. Where I got my plans from, in case anybody's curious, I did get them from Dr. Leo, because I found him on YouTube for Horizontal Beekeeping. Uh, Dr. Leo's page, I believe it's, um, I think it's just HorizontalHives.com. He has a base... um, He has a base plan, like what you start with, and then there's different manipulations that you can do, build on or change, and he has those plans as well on the site. So we started off with the main body plan, and then the modifications we made was we added the peaked roof. That was a modification. 
and we added the screen board with the tray inserts as my pest management control. That was also a modification. So with those three plans combined, that's how I kind of came up with my, um, with my hives. As I said before, it was very expensive for all that labor to build the hive. So most of the funds that I made from the yard sale went to that. I'm actually excited because we're doing another yard sale here coming up and pretty much all of those funds will also go back to paying back anything that I didn't have funds for. Things like queen clips and um, I don't know, uh, I had to buy a couple of follower boards and, and then modify those. Um, just all kinds of stuff, paint, things I had to pay out of my pocket. So any funds that from my future yard sale is going to go towards paying that back kind of. So I want to be kind of su self-sufficient a little bit with the beekeeping as much as I can. And that being said, sometimes you have to, um, think outside the box to save some money. So things that we did when you see this in the apiary, if you see this in the apiary, we found some abandoned fencing that was in the woods. Uh, it was once a like dog kennel area, no longer used. It was in the woods, hadn't been used for years. The forest was taking it back. As you can see, I live on the edge of the forest on the back side of my house. The front side of my house is where my apiary is going to be because we have a very long front yard. So there's gonna be a lot of traffic sounds. I'm hoping this mic helps a lot. I'm not sure how it's gonna work underneath a bee suit, but we're gonna figure that out. Um, so the forest was taking back the fencing, trees had fallen on it. It was a right mess, proper mess. There were vines growing all over it. Um, I'll insert some video clips uh, for, for that, but. My husband helped me bang some stuff back into place. And I think, honestly, for as much of a wreck as it was to begin with, it looks pretty darn good. <laughs> I think so. Um, so that's how we kind of save money. We have kids. We have dogs. So I wanted to have a barrier to keep out guests or, you know, people on the property, kids on the property. So I wanted to have a proper apiary space for my hives. Um, the other part is if you see this, there's a apiary table. I wanted to have a table to put my smoker on so that I didn't like burn anything. Um, so I wanted to have a table out there. We found what I think is a table that came from like a restaurant kitchen area. Um, or it used to be a table or some sort of, I have no idea. I'll show you a picture, but it is all made of metal. It is kind of bent in some areas. That's fine. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so we, it was like a piece of scrap. We took that scrap table from a kitchen restaurant from long ago. It's stainless steel. So it's besides the beat up state of it, it's not rusting. So that's pretty good. Um, and then we had some old granites slabs that somebody had given us um they used to work at a i don't know granite store and these slabs were deemed imperfect because they had imperfections on them so the owner decided that they weren't good enough to put on the floor to, for sale and they were going to chuck them and we were like we will take them <laughs> and they have literally been also sitting in the woods for many years not doing anything just being taken over by the woods so we sort of dug one of those slabs up and my husband cut it and he put it in this table and that is the apiary table some things to keep in mind for my apiary is i plan on only having five hives people laugh at me when i say that because apparently beekeeping is very addictive <laughs> and um once you get hives it they sort of propagate themselves and you just you'll blink and then suddenly you'll have like 30 hives and you're like where you know or more and you're like how did i get here listen my life is crazy <laughs> i only have time for maybe five hives so i'm gonna try and stick to five hives we'll see how that goes but um i'm really excited for this journey again i'm gonna i'm gonna round this up with um oh and i forgot to include today is 
March 31st. It's Easter. So happy Easter. Very exciting. He's risen. Amen. Um, so I do want to conclude this, this video by saying that, um, this is for my dad. So again, I'm sorry if it feels awkward if I call you dad, but I'm going to be talking to my dad through these videos. And hopefully the next up video will be me doing a tour of the horizontal hives for you, dad. I'm super excited. So you can get an idea of what we did, what we implemented and what we're working on. All right. Love you, dad. I'll talk to you later. Bye.